In this video, we're gonna be taking you through hooking up the electronics, specifically FT Aura 5, setting up our tow release, and making sure all of our controls are working properly. So in this portion of the video, we're gonna be taking you through how to get this set up with an FT Aura 5. Now, if you just wanna go through a conventional radio, we'll have a link down below to a video that'll guide you through setting up any basic radio to your controls and making sure your controls are going the right direction. What I wanna really do with the FT Aura 5 is give you the ultimate setup for the tow release, similar to what you saw with Stefan flying, but also to make this a fantastic training experience for either new pilots, kids, or all the above. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and start here with the three main components. We have what we call a battery eliminator circuit. It's called a BEC for short. We have our lemon satellite receiver and we have our FT Aura 5. Along with that, we're also gonna use the most simple basic radio that we have here, which is a DXE. The DXS process will be the exact same as well. What we wanna do first is go ahead and pop these out. We're gonna bind everything and then we're gonna bring in the airplane, connect it, and get all the controls working the proper way. Now for this setup, you're not gonna need your computer at all, so you can go ahead and put your USB cable and any extra stuff to the side right now. First, we'll connect our satellite receiver and we're gonna use mini port B. Now we're gonna take our BEC and for this one, we're gonna actually plug it into our port B. Now the port B is typically a communication port for things like FR Sky, Grapner, Futaba, um, anything with SBUS, uh, but we can also power our rail from it as well. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and we're gonna make sure that we're not in our signal wire here. So if you look at the very bottom, you're gonna see that this bottom pin is ground, the middle pin is power. Now make sure as far as the DXE or DXS, you have none of your channels internally reversed here. So if you've flown this before, you knew that you reversed the channel, make sure everything is set back. Your manual will show you exactly how to do that. We're gonna hold our bind button down right here. Our bind button is the one that's closest to the middle. And then we're gonna also power on our whole unit. Now you can see that by holding the bind button down, we're in bind mode. I'm gonna hold the bind button on my transmitter. I'm gonna get about four feet away and the solid orange light indicates that we are now bound. So we are ready to now hook this up. We're gonna bring our airframe in and start making connections. So as you can see here, we have our wings installed. We have all of our leads pointing out towards the front. We're gonna make our connections the exact way it says in our little quick start guide here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go through them verbally here. S1 is gonna be our throttle port. We're not gonna obviously be putting a motor on this, but we will be using the throttle for is our tow release. So we're gonna leave that one empty. Our next one, port two or S2, is gonna be our left aileron. So I'm gonna look inside here. I'm gonna find my left aileron. There it is. I'm gonna plug it into port two. Port three is our right aileron. Port four is our elevator. So I'm gonna look, let's see, this is my elevator here. And port five is my rudder. At the end of this section, when we have all of our controls figured out, our last step will be to put on our tow release and we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm also gonna take our little double side tape here. I'm gonna pull off our little notch. And I'm gonna stick this to the bottom. Now it's incredibly important that we mount this the proper direction. The proper way to mount this is with all of these servo pins pointing towards the tail of the airplane. You're gonna notice that there's a little space invader stuck on the bottom of the board pointing towards the direction the plane should be flying. That's the way we wanna go. So this here is forward, this is backwards. I'm gonna go ahead, peel the back side of my sticky tape. Because I want as much weight in the front of the CG as possible, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right here. This is gonna also be incredibly useful if I wanna adjust my trim or do any changes here in the future. There we go. And I can kind of tuck these right on back. And I'm just gonna take my hot glue gun here. Put a little drop of hot glue. Make sure I stick this back far enough where the little flaps aren't gonna get in my way. And there we go. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed a slightly bigger Tattoo 853 cell. This is gonna be enough to fly for hours and hours, especially since we're not running a motor. It's also gonna help me with my center of gravity here. Let's go ahead and power this on. There we go. You're not gonna hear any beeps because there's no motor. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this just back just far enough where I can access the buttons. Again, I'm making sure my signal wires are pointed backwards. There we go. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our controls going the right way. So I'm gonna go ahead and point the airplane in the same orientation I wanted to point towards you. So in other words, I want when you're building this, I want the tail to be closest to your chest with the nose pointing away as if you're in the cockpit. Now when I move the stick to the left, 
you're gonna notice that the ailerons move the wrong direction. Also, when I pull back on the stick, the elevator goes down instead of going up. And when I push the rudder to the right, the rudder goes left. So our ailerons, elevator, and rudder are all the wrong direction. We wanna fix that. Now, the really neat thing is we don't have to do a single thing through our transmitter, nor do you want to, especially if you have an Aura system. All we simply need to do is hold down on the bind and on the trim button for, at the same time for about six seconds. That flashing green light means we're in something called quick set mode. Quick set mode is going to be perfect for helping us to know which way the drivers are working and also change our server direction. So I'm going to go back and orientate this towards you. When I yaw the plane to the right, you're going to notice that the rudder gives me more right input. That's wrong. And if you remember, our servo direction was also wrong. The way we're going to fix that is we're going to hold our servo down to one corner or the other on a rudder for about five or six seconds. After six or seven seconds, the rudder is going to change. So now when I move my rudder, the rudder gives me right input. And then also when I check my gyros by moving it, you're going to see that the rudder is actually giving me left input to bring me back to center. Let's do the same for elevator now. When I pitch down, you notice I get more down elevator. And that also coincides with the elevator being backwards too. The reason we check our control surface with the direction of the stick and also the gyros is to make sure we don't have anything uh, backwards or the board mounted wrong. To change this again, all we're going to simply do is hold all the way down or all the way up on our elevator. Six or seven seconds. There we go. And she's reversed. One more test. When we go up now, the elevator is going to take us down. And when I pull back on the stick, the elevator is moving properly. So when I pull back, it's now giving me an up command. Let's check out our bank. When I bank to the right, it gives me more right. That's definitely not right. When I give right command, it gives me a left command on the bank. So all we're going to simply need to do Hold it all the way over to the left or right. And now we have our commands back. So when I go to the right, it gives me left input to bring me back to the center. And then also when I move my stick to the right, it gives me right input from my bank. At this point, our controls are moving properly and also the gyros in the FT Aura 5 are also working properly to help us with wind and also bringing us back to level when we're in beginner mode. The last thing I want to do is activate a feature called Level Assist. Level Assist is basically going to let the airplane return to level whenever you center the sticks. To do this, all I simply need to do, hold down on the bind button. The bind button is labeled on the board, but for you watching in the camera here, it's the one closest towards the center of the control board. I'm going to hold this down. It's going to turn blue, two cycles. and level assist is now activated. The only thing left to do now is to hold down both buttons to exit quick set mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down both the trim and the bind button. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rapid flashing blue light means it's resetting and we are now reset. Up on the top here of our DXE and similar to our DXS, you're gonna have your mode switch. When the mode switch is all the way in the zero position, there's going to be no gyros. No gyros. When we have it in the center position, position one, you're going to notice that whenever I turn and tilt the airplane, the plane is always going to want to return to level. And then finally, in mode two, that's going to be basically taking out the effects of the wind. So you can have full control, you can do rolls and loops and inverted flight. There's no level assist activated, but it will take out the effects of wind wonderfully. This is going to help us immensely when we're flying on those days where it's a little bit breezy and we want to be able to enjoy the surroundings without it getting bumped around, especially as light as this plane is. And you're going to notice that whenever I move this, the controls react, but they don't hold their settings to return me to level. The only thing left to do now is install our tow release. So we put our airframe aside for the moment here to build our tow release. This tow release is included in your speed build kit. First thing we're going to be doing is we're going to crack this piece loose that you see here and we're going to fit it down into place. Now you can use instant glue to glue this or you can just simply use some hot glue on the four corners. We call this simple tow release for a reason because it's incredibly simple. We're going to mount the servo in the back corner like you see here. A little bit of glue, press it down and let it dry. While it's carrying, we're gonna do a quick Z-bend. We're gonna to go to the furthest out hole on our control arm. And then I'm gonna cut this excessively long until we find out exactly where we need it once we mount it onto the airplane. Our tow release is now done. Let's go ahead and bring our airframe back in. On the bottom of your battery tray, you're gonna notice that there's a rectangle that's gonna match up exactly with our simple tow release here. All we simply need to do is we'll do a quick test fit. Make sure we're happy with the way it looks. Put some glue down. And then once again, we'll center it right up there, kind of kind of move it around a little bit, right into position. 
We're gonna take our servo wire and pass it through the hole. Right on to the other side. We're gonna take our tow release and we're gonna plug it into our throttle port. Make sure that your signal wires line up with the other signal wires on your F2 or a 5 board. And lastly, we're gonna power on our transmitter. Let it initialize. With the throttle all the way closed, we want this wire to be extending forward, just as it is forward. So basically when the throttle is closed, this is all the way forward, this will be the latch, latch direction. When we pull all the way back, at this point right here is where we want to cut it. Now when we push this forward, you're going to see that it'll lock in. So now when you bring your lead through the nose of the airplane and you have your loop, you're going to open the throttle up, you're going to slide the loop around it, you're going to let it drop, and you're going to capture it. So when it's going through the air and you're ready to release, all you simply need to do is give it full throttle and the loop's going to fall right off for you. Included in our small pack kit, we have our Velcro here. We're going to cut a simple about two inch piece of Velcro down. And whether you want to go fuzzy fuselage, prickly plain, it is okay. Um, I used to do fuzzy fuselage all the time. And then a community member reminded me anytime I have that prickly stuff in my pocket, it picks up all the lint. So now if you guys have watched the most recent stuff, I'm more of a prickle plane kind of guy. So in this case, we're gonna put the fuzzy on the battery and the prickle on the plane. I'm gonna feed this right up in the front nose here. And then don't need to plug it in right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this on just as you see here. And just to get as much weight up on the front here, I went ahead and put down the Velcro and everything vertically. So that way I can even slide this if I had to farther forward. Now I'm using an 850 milliamp three cell battery for this specifically here. If you have a BEC that can go down to two cell and it's a larger capacity, that's fine. Just make sure at the end of the day, whatever battery you put in here, you have it balanced properly. And speaking of balance, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in right here. That's where I think it'll roughly land. Now I'm gonna find the holes on the bottom of the wings on each side. Is that when I put my fingers right on the center of gravity, I have just a slightly nose down attitude. That is exactly what we want for our first flights. As we get used to flying this more and more, we can always adjust the CG back a little bit further and try to get a flatter glide, but this is a really great place to start. At this point, our FT Simple Waco is now ready to fly. Let's go ahead and take it out and throw it off the balcony. All right, friends, we're ready to take this off here. It's a nice, calm wind. I have a big goal. We have never launched this and made it to the other side of the runway. I think we're gonna do it this time. My youngest son is across the runway. We're gonna see if we can get over the river. You ready? You ready, Mike? Three, two, one. Whoop, <laughs> gotta get far. Biggest swing possible. I think we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it. Yes! <laughs> All right, friends, thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you for going through this build journey. We are really excited to see how this gets people in the hobby, but also we want to see the C-47s towing up this Waco glider and seeing people have lots of memories together. If you build this or the C-47 or hopefully even both, make sure you share those pictures and share that story. I know it inspires us, it'll inspire others. Thanks again for being part of the family and we'll see you next time.